Hey guys, JDSP here. In this video, we're going to run through how to get MPV set up to do HDR analysis within heat map, brightness, gamut, all that jazz within a capture card in real time. So you can do analysts on like PS5 videos, Xbox videos, whatever you want, actual videos, everything you can get set up. Let's go ahead. So in the description, there'll be two links. One will be a zip to a pre-configured MPV setup. Um, only use this one. Uh, the one, if you were to go get the newest build from their own website, you're going to have some hiccups because the shaders won't correctly work unless you do some extra uh, messing around, which we're not going to go into today. And there'll be a link for FFmpeg. The reason why these are separate is because otherwise the file just gets a bit too big. So unzip both of these, uh, fire 7-zip, uh, extract files, OK. Uh, let it extract into these folders here. Get rid of the ex existing zips. Go to the FFmpeg folder, again, bin, and copy the FFmpeg.exe. You're gonna want this and only this. And copy and paste it into the MPV folder. Um, I mean, strictly you don't have to do that. We're gonna be doing this only for one command only, and then we can get rid of the file. But having everything in one folder just makes it easy for my video today. Uh, next, we're gonna to go to um, the description again, and there'll be a couple of uh, scripts. The first script, tells asks ffmpeg to list all of the incoming uh, video audio sources to the pc this is important because everyone's capture card is named a bit different unless you've got the exact one that i do and so knowing the exact name is important to get this working at all uh, copy this text go back to the folder where you've got all the files click the address bar and click cmd in this it'll open up the command prompt you can paste the text press enter it will give you a list of uh, all the devices that i mentioned previously um, for this setup we're not going to be using audio uh, we're just going to be using the video uh, having the audio in for my setup at least causes lots of stutter and lots of lag um, and we don't need that in this example because we can just pipe the audio into the recording using obs itself um, if you wanted to do this just for yourself without any recording you can just use windows to listen to the audio device so copy the name of your video source, uh, open up your text editor of choice, mine's gonna be Sublime, and there'll be another um, template script. It will look something like uh, this uh, and get rid of that. So um, in between the two quotation marks, we're gonna put the name of our capture card. Yours might be called something different. Paste it in here. At the end of it, you'll have the resolution and the frame rate. Um, I'm going to take it upon you that you know what your resolution and frame rate can do. Um, if you don't, uh, seek the tech specs of your capture card. Um, however, in my case, if you've got the HD60, HD60X from Argato, you may be uh, misled to believe that the card can only do 1080p 60fps HDR capture. Uh, in actual fact, it can do 4K 30fps HDR capture. Uh, they just lied. So copy the text uh, with your capture card name into it. Go back to the folder for MPV, press CMD, uh, right click, paste it in, press OK, and you'll be greeted by whatever your capture card is currently being fed. Um, the setup I've given you already is pre-done. There's no configurations done, there's no reshades all set up. The home button opens reshade, the end button turns off the shader entirely. Um, right now we have Horizon Forbidden West running. Um, as an aside, you don't need HDR turned on your desktop for this to work. So you can leave everything in SDR for capture purposes and it will still run the exact same. If we press the end button and enable the, H uh, the HDR analysis tools and full screen this, um, we have everything on the screen right now. You have the brightness, the average brightness, the minimum brightness, the, the gamut in the three different main color spaces, and the actual waveform itself. If you press the home tool, home button, uh, if you unfull screen it and press the home button, you'll get given the reshade UI. Um, here you can do such things as show the value of the brightness from the cursor specifically. So if you knew some bit of the screen is a certain brightness, you want to just figure it out, put the cursor over it, you can tell that in this shadowed area it's two nits, or point two nits. Um, if you're playing a game where there's completely uncapped brightness, such as uh, uh, Naughty Dog games, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, no, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, God of War, the first one on the PS4, um, 
the maximum nits goes up to 10,000 nits. Now, because of the shader and how it works, it's going to read 000, zero, zero nits. Uh, so in that case, you turn on the workaround for rounding errors. Um, by default, the shader has the um, color gamut triangle thing dis disabled. Um, this may be a limitation of my capture card or just the recording method or something, but I've never had the gamut go over uh, the standard sRGB color space. You'll see there's little dots on the edge. Um, that's just rounding errors. Maybe it will get fixed in, in, in a later revision, but for now, it's just generally there to see what you're doing. Uh, I'm gonna have it turned off because it's, the text tells you the information already. Um, you can change it between XY or UV. Uh, all the tools are there. You can make it bright or dark. Next, you can show the color space, as we've got. You can show the color space map. So if we turn off the heat map, show the color space map, it will have everything to a specific color. So black and white is sRGB. Everything with a different color next to it goes up in different gamuts. Um, but seeing as nothing goes outside of sRGB for me right now, there's no point turning on. Um, you can show the color space from the current position. So if I get the mouse perfectly, you have some elements will go to GCI P3, but most of the time it's in sRGB. Uh, the heat map is where the, the most of the fun happens. Um, it applies uh, the same color system that I think Canon uses for, or Sony uses for their HDRing um, mastering displays, where SDR is in black and white, um, and everything else is in a different color, depending on how bright it is. You can, for capture reasons, make the black and white aspect of this image very bright or very dark. Uh, bear in mind that the shader is meant to be viewed while HDR is turned on. So if we were to go over here, um, this looks fine, but the higher brightness you get, the actual colors start to blend into other colors because it's meant to be viewed in HDR. So with that bearing in mind, just leave it at default of 80. I think you can go up to about 100 before stuff goes a bit wonk. Um, next, we have the brightness histogram exactly what it is, it's the histogram. Um, this was requested by a user on the Special K forum, uh, Discord, and it's incredibly useful actually. I was not uh, too keen on it at first because it's kind of very messy and very ugly, but it's very, very useful in determining black floor levels for different games. Um, you can tell that this game is mostly fine. Stuff goes really, really low. There's like a very small artificial clip where it's not exactly zero nits, but also this scene is not exactly a pristine scene to see really, really dark elements. But it goes pretty far down. If you were to open up Cyberpunk or uh, the plethora of games with terrible black level um, black levels, you'll see that they all hover around the one nit range, which is just all fallen on a lid. Uh, you can change the heat map, by the way, from 10,000 nits to 1,000 nits. This will just change the upper range of the colors. Uh, everything's on a tooltip, so it's explained. A um, bunch of other stuff within the shader, but for now, turn it off. And this is how you get the capture card running into MPV with reshade set up, histogram set up, uh, everything running in real time. Um, the HD60X is low latency enough that if you wanted to do some video demonstration, you can actually play off of the capture itself. Uh, that's one, the main reason why I got it. Uh, beneficial that you can now do 4K 30 FPS HDR capture at the same time, but oh well. So yeah, hopefully this video has been useful for you. Um, everything's pre-done, so there's no setup. Uh, just copy the files in and you're good to go. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this is a useful tool for people because before this has been limited to basically two people on the entirety of YouTube. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.